Hey, this is Jay Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 of the Week in Bass Fishing, which this week is five things you might want to get instead of forward-facing sonar. Here we go. Number five. Lightweight reels. Yep, lightweight rods and reels are a big trend right now, partly because of finesse being a trend, but also partly on their own. In my opinion, there's many good and lightweight rods right now, but that's not necessarily the case with reels, especially on the bait casting side, which is what I'm talking about. Now, a few I'm familiar with are the new Abu Garcia Xenon reels. They got three in total, and the new Cast King MG12 Elite. Now, why should you think about buying maybe one or more of these reels? Well, I'll put it this way. It's real easy to get used to a lightweight casting reel. Once you fish with one, after that, normal reels can feel a little clunky. Check out what Mike Iaconelli has to say about it. This thing is so light. When I put this reel in my palm, it literally feels like it disappears in my hand. If you can imagine not really feeling the reel on the rod so everything's lighter and more sensitive, that's what he's talking about. That's what five ounces or less of a reel feels like, or doesn't feel like. Now they're not cheap and no good reel is, but you can still get a few for the price of forward-facing sonar. Anyhow, don't overthink it. Rambo didn't. What does this one? It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. Number four. How about better batteries? What are they called again? Anulax batteries. Arbulary batteries. That's nothing like what I just said. Okay, neither one of those. I'm talking about lithium batteries. Why consider them? Well, check out what Bassmaster Elite Pro Brock Mosley says. With these batteries, I can run multiple days on a single charge without having any worries. And that takes a lot of stress off my shoulders at night and during the day when I'm fishing. But they can last you three or four days on a single charge. They're stronger, they're half the weight, and uh, last way longer. These have come with 11 year warranty. Man, that's really cool, but they are pretty darn expensive at just under a grand a piece typically. Now we all know that's good in the long run, but tough to afford up front, especially when you're talking for the trolling motor. Well, here's a couple things to consider. I talked to Sean Budiak of X2 Power Batteries this week, and he said that if you have a lot of units and you're running 360 and or forward-facing sonar, the best use of lithium for you will be a dedicated electronics battery. In other words, not running your electronics off your starting battery. The other thing he said was that most of us don't need lithium batteries. He pointed to Bassmaster Elite Pro Justin Hamner, who has been running only AGM batteries. So you have lead, acid, AGM, and then lithium. AGMs last at least two times as long as lead acid batteries and are almost as power efficient as lithium, but are only half the price. So think about how you fish, do your research, and just don't buy the batteries from a raccoon. You're telling me. <laughs> you wanna buy some batteries? <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Well, I gotta say most bass fishermen that I'm aware of use a lot of trolling motor. I don't care if you're fishing shallow or you're out there deep spot locking or GPS anchoring or whatever you wanna call it. So can you use a better trolling motor? Unless you've got one of the brand new ones, I'm gonna say yes, even if it costs double what forward-facing sonar costs. While there's no such thing as a brushless walrus, we now have four brushless trolling motors to choose from. The Lowrance Ghost, the Garmin Force, the new PowerPole Move, and the Minn Kota Ultrex Quest. Why go brushless? They're brushless motors and that comes with obvious benefits. Quieter, more power, better efficiency. All that also means more speed. So if you're like this guy. Then get like Kevin Van Dam right here who I don't think has ever driven 55 in his life. Or if you just want spot lock or GPS anchor, 
For a thousand bucks less, just get a regular Minn Kota Altrex or a Motor Guide Tour or Tour Pro. Number two, get a big screen. Like the lightweight reels, you might have to experience this in person before you can understand truly what an amazing deal it is to have a bigger screen. Humminbird, Garmin, and Lowrance, they all make them, and yet they're way expensive, but they might be worth it for you. You can see more with them just with the bigger screen real estate. The resolution is probably a lot better than you're used to, and you can literally see more by splitting the screen into thirds or quarters or some other geometry, so you can get a lot more in your brain at a glance. Now, like I said, they are expensive and they do get upgraded, it seems like, every year, but if a big screen will be a significant upgrade from an older unit that you have now, think about it. Just know what features you want. It features two-pronged wall plug, pre-molded hand grip well, durable outer casing to prevent fall apart. Sold. And don't be afraid to switch brands. Great pictures on the screen are great, man. Number one. Get mega. Even the smallest bite from Arachnus Dethicus will instantly paralyze. Oh! Okay, not mega mind, but mega 360, which will blow your mind. <gasps> All right, a couple deals about this. First, is it costs just about exactly the same as forward-facing sonar. Second, it actually is live sonar, but instead of forward facing, it's 360. And it isn't for looking at fish, it's for looking at structure. Third, pretty much every pro fisherman has it because it's that valuable. In fact, before forward facing sonar took off, a lot of pros said they'd rather have 360 over forward facing sonar. Here's Carl Jockumson and Brandon Palnuk with a couple examples of how they use it. Um, these increments, 21 feet, so I know it's about 23, 24 feet, and I can make that perfect pitch from the front of the boat to that brush pole. The start of the rocks over here, the very peak of it, is at about 25 feet, and then they build up onto that point. You can see we've got a point, but where you think that you know, the point would actually be, we found this little rock vein off to the side, and if you look at 360 over here, you can see this broken up rock, right? There's just nothing out here, it's sand, and then you've got all this chunk rock. Well, those are all ambush points for those small mountains. Very cool, take a look at this and this. Man, that to me is sonar. It's like all sonars in one almost. I can't wait to relearn my local lakes with it to catch more fish and out catch the other guys. So if you've got some cash and you don't want to learn or fish with forward facing sonar, ask yourself how you love to fish and what's important to you and hopefully there's some choices, man. Wow, well, you certainly give me a lot to think about. That's all I got for you this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to sign up for the juicy Bass Blaster email. See you next week. God bless you.